I have a serious question. Yes. What is this? <laughs> what, what, what are You're a YouTube talk show. You have never worked with a sidekick. Um, no. Do you think there's a sidekick brings any value to the program at all? I guess if I were hosting things like The Tonight Show and stuff like that, sidekicks are people you play off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Comics play off. No, I would imagine you, Owen, yeah. have fun with Quentin. Oh, we oh, have yeah. fun all yes, the time. Quentin don't is kind of like a prop. <laughs> in other words, he sits here wearing a tuxedo. It's 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> it's a sunny day. He's wearing a tuxedo. Um, he's a prop. He's a prop. He's a prop. So you, you, if you feel you need him, <laughs> if you feel you need a prop, yes. Quentin is a prop. Who is your favorite interviewer right now? Larry's 84, so sometimes his sounds aren't always what he means. I've decided to put up some subtitles so you can better understand him. I loved Mike Wallace very much. He was very, his style was very different from mine, but I liked the sound of his voice. He was a great friend. There's a crispness to him. I liked very much. Charlie Rose was okay, but his questions were too long. A little show-offy. Who was your role model growing up? Larry? That's a very good question. I had a few. Um, Arthur Godfrey was a great broadcaster years ago. I read Barber, the Dodger announcer who taught Vin Scully. I loved Edward R. Murrow, one of the great newscasters. I just loved the whole ambiance, first radio and then television, of a sound that came out to me. When I was five years old, I would imitate radio announcers. Did you I was, like to imitate? See, I would just go in and there were shows like uh, A Tale Well Calculated to Keep You in Suspense. Mm -hmm. I'd be five, six years old. I'd listen to this, go into the bathroom in our little apartment in Brooklyn, and say, look into the mirror and say, A Tale Well Calculated to Keep You in Suspense. You know, I pretended to be an announcer. When I was in my teens, and I'd, I'd go, go from Brooklyn into Manhattan, I'd go into buildings where radio stations were and pretend that I worked there. Really? I'd get onto the elevator. There were elevator operators then, and I would say, fourth floor, please. You know, hello. Uh, I, just, I, I just loved it, wanted to do it. And the first day I was on, I loved it. And I've been doing it now for... 60 years. 60... It started in 1957. It's unbelievable, really. And this is 1974, so... I have hosted thousands of shows. I've interviewed over 60,000 people. I have been a guest on many shows. I will have to tell you both honestly, this is the weirdest show <laughs> I, I have ever been on. And that is... I mean that as a compliment. But I'm so sorry. This is embarrassing. I think my phone rang during my Larry King interview. It's okay. That's part of the show. You go right with it. You know, there's people watching this. They go to the moment. Yes, they do. So, all right, you got a call. Was it important? Um, no, it was just my grandmother. Grandmothers could be important. When did you think you made it as an interviewer? Well, that's a good question. Oh. Uh, I thought I'd made it when I, I got a Peabody Award, the only Peabody Award ever given to a radio talk show. Really? Well, that's something else. That must and have it wasn't for any proud. individual show, but for a compilation of all my work. Oh, that's great. And then I felt most gratified when I got a Lifetime Achievement from the Emmys. Well, you earned it, honestly. I, the fact that we get to entertain you after you've entertained us for all of our lives. Larry, stop sleeping <laughs> on our, please. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry.